Hey, how's it going everyone? My name is True Underdog, here today with a beginner's guide for Eliza. Now just like the Yoshimitsu guy, this guy's gonna be a lot more loose, right? Not nearly as structured. We're just gonna casually talk about her moves and what makes her good, her launchers, extenders, or enders, and all that good stuff. Alright, so first off we're going to discuss her pokes. Now she has a lot of pokes, alright? It's a very large laundry list of attacks. Now with that being said, I may forget something, so if I do, please as always be nice and post it down below in the comments so we can all learn Eliza together. Okay, so for starters, there is the Reliable 1-1. One, one. However, oddly enough, it's not a true combo. See, she blocks the second hit. Unlike 1-2. Now both these pokes are 10 frames, but 1-2 actually combos, so it's my go-to. It's fast, both hits get in there, it's my favorite. And next up we have 2-2. Two, two. Now 2-2 two, two is slower, but as you can see the second hit is actually a mid. That's a big deal, it'll catch crouching opponents, right? They're trying to duck your high? Second hit will catch them if their punish is not fast enough. If their whiff punish skills aren't on point, you're gonna catch them with that second hit, whereas 1-2 is a high, so they can duck under it completely. So 2-2 two, is a good option to have in your arsenal. Oh geez, I almost forgot, her 2-2 two, two is actually special cancelable as well. So what that means is the second hit can actually be followed up with a special move of your choice. Now. They don't actually combo outside of a juggle, so if I launch the opponent, then you can actually see a combo. Whoa, a bad example. Okay, let me do a different special move. There you go. So see there, it actually comboed. Otherwise, it's not going to be a true hit, because it doesn't have quite enough hits done. With that being said, it's still a great way to set up her dive kick, which is quarter circle back plus three, or quarter circle back plus four. So even if the opponent blocks it, it's still a good way to go in for that dive kick, which does hit mid, and knocks the opponent down on hit. So if they're crouching, boom, catch them with this, right? Again, doesn't combo in the neutral, but does extend combos very well if the opponent's already launched and in the air. So keep that in mind, I almost forgot to mention that. It cancels into special moves. And also, don't forget about the tech throw, because Eliza does have a command grab. It's down forward 1 plus 2, so you can do 1, 2, and then go for the command grab. Very sneaky stuff. On hit or block, it can catch the opponent off guard. It also works pretty good after 1-1, one, one, even though it's not a true block string. They're going to block the second hit, and then get caught by a grab, right? They're going to be on the defensive, and you catch him with that. So don't forget about your tick grab. Eliza does have a down forward 1 plus 2. Good command grab, lots of damage. Keep it in your arsenal, all right? It's important to understand that you have that. Look at the range on it, too. Even after a 2-2, two, two, still a good tick throw. However, what's even better for catching crouching opponents is down forward 1-2. Now, when I say down forward, I mean diagonal down forward. I don't mean quarter circle forward. I just mean a single direction, down forward, and then 1. So down forward 1-2 hits mid twice. Also pretty good range. She scoots forward a little bit. Not a bad normal. Scoots in, gets the damage, and a true combo. Both attacks hit. So if the opponent keeps trying to duck your highs, catch him with this. It's nice and safe on block, and it's powerful as well. You can also do down forward 1-4, which is safer, and also a true hit, as you can see. Still a true hit. Safe on block as well, but they could duck the second hit. So keep that in mind. It's a bit of a risk. It's also a true combo as well. Now it does less damage than down forward 1-2, but it's still a good option to have. Now if the opponent is too far away for any of your faster pokes, like say they're over here and you can't quite reach them with any of your moves, then you have, although, <laughs> wow, 2-2 two, two has good range. I didn't realize how good the range was on 2-2. Two, two. That's another plus of 2-2. Two, two. The, the range on this thing is, is just nuts. I love that. But anyway, like I was saying, if they're too far away for your 1 attacks and your 10 frame normals, you can do down forward 4. So down forward 4 has better range and hits mid. The opponent can't crouch under it. Very good normal. Good poke. Good way to keep that space down, right? If you're outside your area you like to be in, you're a bit further away, boom, catch him with down forward four. And then use that to make your way in with 2-2. Two, because two. as we saw, 2-2 two, two has amazing range. That's a godlike move. I think 2-2 two, two may be my new favorite string. And next up we have back four. Now what makes back four interesting is it actually combos into her special moves. So if I do quarter circle back plus one, I get a combo. Look at that damage. And that becomes a big deal later on when you're trying to do combos with her. Oh, that's a bad example. So if I do this, there's my screw attack, lots of damage, right? It's very good for extending combos, but also a good poke in general, especially if you have a meter available like I do. See, I have one bar down there in the bottom left-hand corner. Check this out. Look at that damage, 42. More importantly, if you do her Shoryuken, and I mean the one Shoryuken, not two, you can actually combo after it, right? It's a very big deal. And that can, once again, cancel after back four. So if I do back four and Shoryuken, I can actually get my combo started. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Check this out. And make it simple, there we go. Lots of damage, very easy to do. Now keep in mind the Shoryuken is actually unsafe on block, so it's a big risk on your part. You can't really hit confirm the back four. You have to cancel it very early, so you're not going to be safe. So it's a very big risk on your end, but lots of damage. Now next up we have forward forward three four. 
So I like this move because it catches sidesteppers and it actually starts off combos too, which is interesting. So I can actually combo after this. Oh, that was a bad example. Sorry, let me try again. Underdog dropped a combo, stop the presses. But look at that, lots of damage, 43. If you want to keep it simple, you can just do it again. Still good damage. Now it does hit high, both attacks are high, so the opponent could just duck under it and hit you with a wall rising move, so do keep that in mind. But it is safe on block, so that's the catch if you do it, and they are blocking high, you're safe. You're totally safe on block, if they duck it, you're in a lot of trouble. So I think it's a really good move to keep in mind, especially if you're right at this distance and you can't reach them with any of your pokes, just get in there with it. Good range, scoots forward, pa pa, catch them with both hits. Lots of damage, good range on it. Oh, also keep in mind, the second hit is obviously a low crush because she hops. That means it will actually beat lows. For anyone in the comments who doesn't know what a low crush is, it means moves that beat lows. And because she leaves the ground for her second kick, she cannot be hit by any low attacks. It's a big deal. And if you're wondering, well, how do I hit them low? I mean, I have all these mids. Sure, I have all these mids to threaten them with, but what's the point of these scary mids if they're never crouching? They don't, I don't have any lows. Why would they ever be crouching? Down four. Not even crouching down four, just down four, straight up, down four. It's a good low, she swings it, so it may even catch sidesteps, I bet it does. And it staggers him a little bit too, so that's a good thing. Puts him in that crouch state, staggers him, hit him with the wall rising on your way up, hit him with that wall rising move, on the way up. So that's how you scare the opponent into crouching. Down four is your weapon. Make them crouch block and then catch him with all your mids. Okay, so next up we have back one two. Back one plus two, sorry, I should elaborate on that. So this move hits twice, knocks the opponent down, that's all good, good damage too. But the reason I like it is because she ducks backward and moves down a little bit, right? So she actually crushes high attacks with this. It's great for whiff punishing, so the opponent goes for a high, duck it, boom, catch him with this. Good stuff, right? Very good stuff. So that's why I like this move. It's very good for evading the attacks, especially if the opponent's aggressive. And they're gonna fly in with, say, like a move like this that hits high, but they're running in to do it. Just whoop, pa, catch him with this, right? Good stuff. I only use it every once in a blue moon, but it's very important to keep in mind. Okay, so next up we have forward 1 plus 2. Now this move is interesting. Not only does it hit mid, so it hits crouching opponents, and also does a lot of damage, but you notice Eliza actually flickers a little bit there, she glows for a half second. That's actually armor. This move will actually armor through the opponent's attack, so watch this. I'm gonna go ahead and set Lily to mimic, so let's go ahead and do that. So check this out, watch this armor. Boom. Now keep in mind, I still took damage, right? I still took damage, but the attack was not interrupted. That's the, that's the point here. If the opponent's being very aggressive, catch him with this, especially in the neutral game. They're trying to outpoke you all the time. Boom, catch him with that. Oh, didn't mean to do that. So let's try to be more simple about it. I'm definitely, I'm sidestepping. But boom, I catch him with this. I'm trying to get my footsie game down. I'm not very good at dancing yet, but I'm, I'm trying. Ooh. But yeah, it's a good move, right? It's good for catching the opponent off guard. It has armor. It's really good for countering aggressive players. Another good move in the neutral can be forward forward 1 plus 2. Look at this, it hits mid to catch crouching players, then it hits high, and then it hits low. Now it's not going to catch Lily because again, she's set to block, so it's not a true combo. The first two hits are, and the third hit hits low. So if your opponent's unfamiliar with this character, this will catch them off guard. Only Eliza players will even know this move exists, right? This mid, high, low. Very sneaky move, but great to keep in your arsenal. Do not forget about forward forward 1 plus 2. And real quick, before we move on to the launchers, do not forget about Eliza's projectile. Eliza's projectile is very fast, and while it says a mid, it's actually a special mid. So you can in fact block this while crouching, which is fair since it looks like a low. It's not a low, the opponent can block this by crouching or standing up. They can also sidestep it as well, so keep that in mind. It's still a useful tool though if you have some distance between you and the opponent, and you want to pressure them with this. Also, if they're trying to run at you, it catches them every single time. It's very good for catching the opponent if they try to run in on you. So do not forget about her projectile. Alright, so next up we have the launchers. Now to start things off, we have down 4, 2, 3. This is a very good launcher, very easy to combo after, knocks the opponent very high into the air, right? But here's the problem, it's unsafe on block, so be very careful when using this move. You want to use this move against players who you know are crouching. Maybe they're avoiding your command grab, maybe they're just scared of your other high attacks and you know they're going to be crouching. Open them with this, because you can't hit confirm it, right? The cancel window's too soon, you cannot hit confirm it. And it is unsafe, so you want to make sure the opponent's blocking. Otherwise, it's a very risky move, but look at that damage. 51, oh, good stuff, good stuff. Next up, we have Wall Rising 3. Now, for you new Tekken players, a Wall Rising attack is when you're crouching, and then during the transition of standing up, you actually push the attack. So I'm not going to do standing 3, and I'm not going to do crouching 3. I'm going to be pushing 3 as she's standing up, like this. So Wall Rising 3 is actually safe on block, and it's a great way to start off your combos, right? Very good move. 
very good move all around. Now the tricky part is you have to crouch to set up the wall rising. You can't just instantly do it, right? And while you're crouching, you're vulnerable to every single mid attack, right? So be warned. So how do you do it? If you can't set it up and it's too slow, then how would I ever do a wall rising attack? The answer is you actually want to duck under a high attack and then punish them for it. So if your opponent's trying to do 1-2, like half the characters in the game can do, or 1-1, one, one, if they're trying to do something like that, you duck the first hit and then you punish the second hit's recovery. Just pow, you catch him with it. When you catch it, you get a full combo. So that's how that works. Eh, eh. Sorry, dog. Sometimes I just gotta finish those combos. It's in my blood. You hear what I'm saying? It's in my blood. Oh god, scratch her. Scratch her up. So next up we have back 1-2. Now back 1-2 is unsafe on block and only combos on counter hit. But the nice part is you have a 4. So back 1-2-4 can actually save you if they try to punish the second hit. So if you're doing this over and over again, maybe the opponent punishes you the first couple of times, and then you catch him with this. Pa! It's a good way to counter the opponent and trick him. Okay, so I turned on counter hit. Now check out how this looks. Launches the opponent, you can do a quick 1-2-4 and get that screw attack in, right? Can you do the back 2-3? Just because I'm curious. I'm kind of learning with you guys. Yes, you can, in fact, do back 2-3. Okay. Now, we're going to cover the extenders a bit later. We're still on the launchers, but I'm just experimenting a bit for myself, too. Eliza's a new character, and a lot of people aren't sure how to play her. There's not even very reliable frame data for her online, so if I mess up the frame data, please correct me down below. Please, for the love of God, please correct me down below, and I will try to correct it the best I can in future videos. And next up, we have one of my favorite combo starters, 3 plus 4. I love this move because it hits low, and you can combo after it without a counter hit. There aren't very many moves in the game that hit low, and you can combo after it without a counter hit. Oh, I just love this move. It's so good. It catches so many players off guard because you go from a standing position to a sweep. A lot of players don't expect that. And she hops. So you know what that means. She actually crushes lows. That's right. A low attack that crushes lows. So I love 3 plus 4. Also, probably catches sidesteps if you look at it. it. It may in fact very well do that. So keep that in mind. If the opponent's trying to sidestep, catch him with this. It's a great move all around. I just love this move. I bet it's unsafe, although I'm not sure because, again, the frame data, but it, it seems like it would be unsafe since it's such a godlike move. Also a bit slow on startup, so the opponent could hit you with mids, right? They could just go pop and just hit you. So keep that in mind. It's only good if the opponent's blocking, or at the very least if you're a bit further away to where they can't reach you, because it does scoot forward. Look at the range on this bad girl. Oh my god! Such a good move in your arsenal. Look at the range on this thing. Such a nightmare. Oh my god. <laughs> what a scary move. I absolutely love it. And last but not least, we have down forward four. So this move actually needs a counter hit and you have to be crouching to do it. So I'm crouching first, then I'm doing down forward four. If you just do standing down forward four, you get the awesome mid-range poke attack, right? But no, if you do it while crouching, you get this. And the tricky part is on counter hit, it's a bit hard to combo after. So let me show you what that looks like. Once again, set her to counter hit and let's do this. So I'm gonna get the counter hit, right? Notice the camera zooms in to let you know it's a good counter hit. Now after this, you have to do wall rising 4. So remember, crouching, I'm gonna let go of crouch and just mash 4, and that's gonna give me that mid attack, right? After that, you can do your combo like usual. Yep, gotta do back 4. So I did back 4, quarter circle back 1. That was actually my way to do that. Okay, so after this move, you do wall rising 4, then back 4. It's a bit tricky, like it's always hard to combo after these counter hit sweep attacks, but still a great thing to keep in mind when you want to start off your combos. If your opponent likes to throw out a bunch of high attacks, you dash in, boom, you catch him with it. Okay, so after your launchers, what comes next? Well, the answer is the extenders. So my go-to extender is 124. It's very fast, does good damage, and it's a screw attack, which means you can follow up for one last series of attacks, which I call the enders, right? So let's say you wanted to come in and do back 124. You could easily do that. Now the issue with 124, it's not the most damaging extender. It's just fast and it's easy, right? Also, the last hit sometimes whiffs on a lot of combos, so it's not your go-to move all of the time but it is old reliable. It's fast, it's hard to mess up, especially if the opponent's launched high enough. It's pretty hard to miss the timing, whereas some other extenders require much stricter timing because they're a bit slower. Because it starts with a one, it's a very fast, very fast combo extender. Now the next one you saw me do quite a lot before, and that's the back four into quarter circle back one. So it's not very easy to do unless you learn how to do it, right? It requires a lot of practice is what I'm saying. I'm, I kind of worded that weird but it requires a lot of practice. So I'm gonna do it right here. Boom, screw attack. Lots of damage too. One of your most damaging way to extend combos is with this string right here. 32 damage, that's pretty nuts. So that's one of your most damaging ways to extend your combos, if you can. I always go for this if I have the opportunity because not only does it do good damage, but it leaves the opponent at a closer distance that I find is more comfortable, right? They're right about here. 
Now one more thing to keep in mind when doing your combo extenders is back to 3. Now it's not actually a screw attack, what this does, aside from good damage, is it keeps the opponent in the air for a good amount of time. So if I do the launcher, boom boom, and I can still do my back 4 down back 1. See that? 44 damage? That's what that move is good for. It's, it's fantastic about that. It keeps the opponent high enough for your slower attacks to connect, and does a lot of damage while doing so. So it is a combo extender, but it's not a screw attack. So you have to do something else after it. So say I do this, I can still do 1, 2, 4. Right? Oh, look at that! It whiffed! See, that's why 1, 2, 4 can be risky. It's not always going to work. So I should have done back 4, quarter circle 1 instead. That would have actually worked. My mistake. But you get the idea. Back 2, 3, great for extending the combos, great for juggling the opponent, and doing extra damage. And last up for how to combo with Eliza, we have the Enders. So the most simple Ender is just forward, forward 2. Lots of damage, hits mid, puts her in a sleepy state. Now if you don't want to go in the sleepy state, just hold back during the attack's hit and she won't do it. See that? I didn't fall asleep at all. Some people in the comments thought that you had to stay in the sleepy state. You do not. The sleepy state just builds meter, which is very good. Now another way to do this move actually, if you want extra range, is forward 4 and then 2 during the animation. You get a lot more range that way. So if the opponent's knocked really far away, that's your answer. So let's see if I can do an example of that. Where the opponent's just pretty far away. See that? I just wanted to close the distance for sure. Forward 4-2, four, really good way to get in. Now if you want more damage than that, but still want to do the misstep, you can actually do 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two during that. So it looks like this. Not a true combo normally, but to end a combo it definitely is. So let's check that out. Now that's actually the most damaging way to get uh, damage off of her misstep, right? That's your damaging string to end combos. Now you notice it did knock her really far away though, so keep that in mind. Also it did not give me the sleepy state, so I couldn't build my meter after doing it. So if you want the sleepy state, you can't do that, so just keep that in mind. Good damage, but you do not build meter, and it's a bit more complicated to pull off. Now your most damaging way to end combos, in my experience, is actually back 1, 2, 4. Now the issue is the range isn't that great, so you have to dash in before doing it, so the misstep cannot help you here, right? It can't close the gap for you. So that's the main issue, right? It does the most damage, but it's a lot harder to get in because you don't have the misstep. You have to actually manually dash in and end your combo that way. So that combo did a lot of damage, but I had to actually dash in to finish it off, and that's a bit tough for people who aren't very experienced with Tekken games. It's also important to note the last hit doesn't always connect, so the 4 doesn't always hit. I was doing some combos just now by recording. I'm gonna try it again, but the last hit did not work. Yep, see right there, last hit did not connect. So I think that if you want a really reliable way to end your combos does a lot of damage, misstep into 1-2, one, 1-2. Two, one two. That's the best way to actually end your combos for damage, and also consistency, right? Now one more benefit actually of doing your combos that way, ending with the 1-2, one, 1-2, two, one, two, you can actually do Eliza's projectile because they're far away, so you can do some more projectile spam, right? I, I don't like the word spam, but you know what I mean. You can do some zoning, play your keep away, you have a projectile, use it. Not many characters in this game have projectiles, especially not ones this fast. Now the opponent can easily sidestep them, and they don't go full screen either. But good stuff, right? Good damage still. So keep that in mind. Good damage, and you have the distance, right? So I'm gonna do it right here. Far away, throw some projectiles. Keep that in mind. Now, alrighty dog, so that covers her launchers, her combo extenders, and her enders. So let's go ahead and move on to the little misstep that she has, right? Her 4 plus 4. What's the exact name for this move? I feel bad if I've been doing it wrong this whole time. But I will apologize for nothing. Oh, I got a bad feeling about this. Oh, it's called Moon Glide. Oh no, so her Moon Glide. So the Moon Glide has a bunch of different things you can do. You've already seen the two which does really good damage and gives you your sleepy state. Great way to end combos. You've seen 1-2-1-2, one, two, one two, which is a damaging way to end combos and put some distance between the two of you so you can do some projectiles and play some keep away for a bit. But what about the other options? You can also do 1-2. This is actually unblockable and does a lot of damage to the opponent. Now the startup is very, very slow. So a very uh, aggressive player or someone with a good eye can react in time to just hit you out of it, especially with a jab, right? They'll just catch you out of it. It can also be sidestepped as well, it does not track the opponent, so keep that in mind. Very slow, can be sidestepped for a big whiff punish, or at the very least can be jabbed out of to interrupt it. Now if your opponent is very defensive though, or they're scared because you just hit him with a big combo, this can be a good way to close out the round with some good damage. Unblockable attack, closes a lot of distance too, I'm pretty sure she scoots forward doing the actual attack itself. Let's try to get back as far as we can and see how much damage, uh, I mean range it actually covers. Ooh, lots of range, almost a full screen attack, so if you're really far away, Come in with this, close that distance, but once again, very easy to counter if the opponent's aggressive or just has a very keen eye and can react quickly. Another really good option out of Moonglide is just 3. 
It hits high, so the opponent could duck under it, but it's good for hitting the opponent with a fast attack, or if they're trying to sidestep, it can also catch them that way too. So just keep that in mind, it's good for catching the opponent if they're trying to sidestep. So do not forget about 3. Now what if you want to do a low though? What if you want to go in and catch him with a low? Just press 4 again. Not only is it a low, but it also causes a knockdown. That's very important to keep in mind. You want to get that knockdown. This moon glide is very deadly, but the low is good to keep in mind. A very far reaching low, right? You're all the way over here. The opponent's not expecting a low, and you can still catch him with it. So keep that in mind. Good tool. Alrighty, Dodge, that concludes the Eliza guide. Please enjoy the complimentary combo guide. I didn't cover her special moves very much in depth in this guide. I may cover them in a separate video if you like. I just don't like my guys to go past 30 minutes if I can help it. And if they do go past 30 minutes, I don't want them to last for an hour. That's just too long of a video to me. I know a lot of people don't click it when they see it's that long. It's pretty overwhelming. So I try to keep these videos nice, short, and sweet. So if you do want a guide about her special moves in general, please post down below. I would love to cover her special moves more in depth. This video was more about her footsies and how to combo with her, and I sure hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please leave a like down below. And while you're down there, go ahead and post a comment too. Tell me what you think. If you want to support the channel and look good while doing it, please check out my t-shirts. If you want to support the channel more directly, please stop on by my Patreon. And if you haven't already, please subscribe, because we have content on this channel every single week. It's never a dull moment on Underdog Gaming. So make sure to come back next time, and as always, stay underdogs.